Hi everybody, my name's David Hill. I'm a two times Paralympic athlete and I now work as an athlete mentor. Um, I'm also a swimming coach and also a personal trainer. What makes me a Paralympic athlete is the fact that I was born missing my left arm below the elbow. So if I show you guys my little left forearm, this is my elbow joint. And if I put my two elbows together, you can quite clearly see how much of my left forearm is missing. And as I said, I was born like this, so nobody knew I was gonna be born with only one hand. It was a surprise to everybody, but it's never stopped me doing what I wanna do. And I think that's a really important message for you guys, is the fact that actually, no matter what your ability, you still have the right to set goals, find what you're passionate about, and work really, really hard to achieve them. So a bit about my background. I competed for 15 years altogether internationally, and I started life in sport at a very young age. So I started life as a swimmer, and I learned to swim when I was three years old. I entered my first competitions with my local swimming club when I was about eight. And then I started to do to some national and also international competitions by the time I was only 12, before realizing my Paralympic dream when I was just 15 years of age. So I was really lucky to compete in Athens 2004 Paralympics. And then I was a swimmer all the way up to London 2012. And after that, I then decided to change sports and begin the sport of para-triathlon. So swimming, cycling and running. And that's where I was able to relive my Paralympic dream to compete in Rio de Janeiro in 2016. It was in my transition between the two sports, so around the time of London 2012, that I started working uh, as an athlete mentor. So a relatively new industry where we really appreciate the skills that we learn firsthand as athletes and actually how that can be really useful when transferred to the workplace. So how I got into my job was appreciating the skill set that athletes can learn firsthand, but then also can be transferred to the in a school setting, in the workplace and in real life. So, for example, athletes need to believe in themselves. We also need to be really resilient. And those are also skills that everyone can, need, can adopt and work on um, in everyday life to be successful. So it was through the power of sport and appreciating what that can teach us in terms of our skill set and our attitudes, as opposed to the physical fitness and the technicalities of the sport that allows me to do my job. Much of my work is now working with 16 to 25 year olds and they'll be classed as what we call NEAT. So that's not in education, employment or training and perhaps they're actually inactive as well. So they're currently not doing any exercise or sport. So it's through my interventions and my work and me sharing my story will hopefully inspire and motivate them to begin adopting an active and healthy lifestyle, feeling really good about themselves, improve their mental and physical well-being, and work towards achieving their goals. I'm now self-employed, which is really, really nice. So I'm a contractor for numerous different companies and I can choose when I work, um, how often I work, which is really, really nice to be able to control my diary. Another way that I got my job though is through some volunteering and also continually learning. So CPD, continued professional development and doing various training courses. So I volunteered as a youth worker previously. I've done qualifications as a swimming teacher, as a lifeguard, as a gym instructor, as a personal trainer. And I'm always upskilling myself by listening to content, podcasts, watching videos and inspirational content. There's lots of different aspects to my role and this is where my story perhaps differs a little bit from everybody else's because I don't just have one fixed job but it's a variety of those tasks throughout the week which keep me energised. This means that I'm always looking for little bits of work and different projects to take on which also means I have to continually connect with people and network as well which is a really important skill to learn. So a typical day for me would be planning some content or making a PowerPoint presentation to then deliver it to an audience. It could involve a talk to an audience to inspire and motivate them to be the best they can be, whether that's in person or over webcam. I mentioned I'm also a swimming coach, so some of my day will involve writing some swimming training programmes or some competition planning for my swimming club. There's perhaps some reports to write or some surveys to get in in order to measure the impact of some of the work that I do so I can justify some of the funding that goes into my work, but then also see the impact of my work so I can feel the reward. And there's always lots of emails and correspondence to go out every single day to maintain a really good reputation and build good working relationships. Finally though, I do live by the beach, so I do always make sure that there's time in my day to leave the house, go down to the beach and walk the dog. The most memorable part of my athlete mentor and speaking career was the first ever speech that I delivered to a large audience. I was really, really nervous even right up before I was about to deliver it. Um, and I still wasn't sure about some of the content that I was about to deliver and whether it was worth them listening to it. But it was the applause at the end that I got from it that made that job worthwhile and really made me appreciate the benefit of my story and how I could impact and help others.
The worst part about my job is often knowing whether anyone's going to turn up, whether that's for a face-to-face -face intervention or working virtually on a platform like Zoom, for example. I know I can do all the planning in the world and be really looking forward to delivering. However, if other people don't give them the chance to turn up, I don't get the chance then to deliver and do my job. However, the best thing about my job is often I'm working with the most hard to reach young people, perhaps the young people that have failed in the past and they're too scared to try again in case the same thing happens again and they fail. That's when the best part of this job is encouraging a young person to step outside of their comfort zone, realise their potential and go on to accomplish their goals. The five top key skills that I need for my job is number one, commitment and patience and appreciating that success is not going to happen overnight. Secondly, attention to detail, organisation and time management and making sure everything you do looks professional. Number three is about being adaptable and creative and sometimes having to think outside the box about how you can do things differently. Number four is about what I call stickability. So it's the power to be able to keep going and also about discipline and focus because I've got to stay self-motivated because I am my own boss. And number five is about confidence, approachability and really good communication skills. So it's always making sure that energy that you give off is really, really positive. My final bit of advice to you guys is to build a network and also volunteer in something that you're really, really passionate about. Because when you find something that you love, the hard work comes easy. We all want to end up finding a job that actually doesn't feel like work. And finally, know yourself, know your strengths, know what you can bring to the workplace and any other opportunities that come your way. Really know what makes you feel alive as well. And lastly, embrace your uniquenesses. Thank you very much for listening.